I don't agree. The man who brought this case uh, to Strasbourg, uh, John Hurst, um, was sent to prison for bludgeoning an old lady to death. The European Court of Human Rights decided his human rights had been violated by not having the right to vote. I think he violated every imaginable right of the woman who he bludgeoned to death and is still isn't sorry for. I think... I think that this... I think that this case, this case points to the terrible thing that is happening in Strasbourg which is that activist judges uh, and, and ambulance-chasing lawyers are creating a situation where the ordinary human rights of ordinary people are routinely being trumped by the unordinary rights of people who have behaved appallingly in society. And I have to say there is one other reason why I think this is an important thing, which is that when David Cameron was asked about this at Prime Minister's Questions, he said that the idea that Strasbourg could force prisoner votes on this country made him feel physically sick. There is a serious democratic problem when something which has no support in the House of Commons, very little support I think in the country, and something which makes the Prime Minister sick is nevertheless forced on this country. So I think there's a second reason why this is a good thing, which is it has shown that our Parliament remains sovereign and can override and ignore decisions from Strasbourg. That is a very important precedent. But and only an hour. Yes, I think he was right. Um, and I think we should start this by just reminding ourselves what multiculturalism is not. Multiculturalism is not multiracialism. It isn't pluralism. Uh, for years, the multicultural policy has been able to glide along in part because of that misunderstanding. Because of the misunderstanding that when you talk about multiculturalism as a policy, what you're talking about is solely immigration or multiracialism or so on. Uh, it's allowed itself an incredible uh, easy ride, not least by the fact that this confusion has meant that any critic of multiculturalism has been immediately decried for years now as a racist. What of do some you understand kind. by multiculturalism? Multiculturalism in the way as a that policy. David Cameron described. As a policy, multiculturalism is the following. It is the idea that there is effectively no such thing as British society or British culture. There are simply different communities which you're born into. If, for instance, you're born into a community from an Asian background, you will be treated by government throughout your life as a member of the Asian community. If you're born into some other uh, a racial or, or religious grouping, you'll be regarded in that way. And that anything in that group could be different from what the norm in society goes on. Let me give one quick, quick example I gave in, in a, an article yesterday in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, it's, it's been quite commonly known in recent years, for instance, that girls of Pakistani origin have, at the age of 16, been taken out of British schools and married older men. Now, if a white girl of 16 over recent decades had been married against her will to some randy old pervert who wanted to have his way with her, the state would have stepped in. It would have rightly said that that was an outrage. But, lo and behold, 16-year-old girls of Asian origin disappearing from their schools, nobody wanted to mention it because it could be thought to be racist. Right. The idea was that there are different values for different people in society, and there is nothing more divisive than that, and I'm glad that David Cameron has called time on it. Um, time in answer time. to the question, I think he's wrong. I don't agree with Douglas's definition uh, at all. Um, I, believe, I'm, I believe I'm a product of multiculturalism, not just multiracialism. Uh, my father came to this country in 1966. He used to write lots of letters to newspapers with his views on the stories of the day, and he used to get dog litter through his uh, letterbox in response. Uh, that 45 years later, in my view, 45 years later, his son can sit here on Question Time with David Dimbleby and a Conservative minister and say that I'm a proud Briton and a proud Asian and a proud Muslim, I think is a testimony to the success of multiculturalism in this country, which is definitely not far from even. And, and, and I'm, I'm just on, on Douglas's point. On Douglas's point about anyone who goes against multiculturalism is regarded as a racist. Uh, a, that's not true, but B, let's look at the reaction to David Cameron's speech. Uh, Nick Griffin said it was a provocative speech. When Nick Griffin says your speech is provocative, you know you're in trouble. The daughter of the leader, the daughter of the, leader of the French National Front, Jean-Marie Le Pen, said she wanted to congratulate David Cameron on his speech. And the leader of the EDL in Luton said, he's saying what we're saying, he knows what his base is saying. So when I hear reactions like that, I do worry about such speeches. Well, what do you think he was getting at? What was he trying to say? Do you think he was, he was speaking in a way that he intended to appeal? I think he did, I think, and it's sad because, look, I'm quite critical of David Cameron, but in 2007 he wrote an article in The Observer in which he said we can't bully people into Britishness, we have to inspire them, integration is a two-way street, it's not just about immigrant communities, it's about all of us, and that David Cameron disappeared. Four years later he turns up in Munich, of all places, 
to tell us that we need this muscular liberalism and to talk like Douglas about forced marriages. Sorry, how many people have forced marriages in this country? And show me which cultural group defends forced marriages and which government defends forced marriages. I've yet to come across a single one. I'd come back on what Mehdi Hassan said. Well, look, I mean, both of the sort of left-wing people on the panel tonight, Mehdi and Jackie Smith, if you can still call Labour members left-wing, but it, both of them have done the same thing the left always does on this. You try to have a discussion about the failure of multiculturalism, and you have the BNP thrown in by Mehdi. They're told, uh, well, the BNP member congratulated him, at least concede, maybe all sorts of crazy and horrible and disgusting people can jump on a bandwagon without meaning that it's the wrong thing to have said. It, they, maybe they're just opportunists. I suspect they are. And Jackie then throws in the example of, uh, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the EDL and thinks, do you really think, Jackie, that, that that was what David Cameron was aiming to do? I mean, a couple of, you know, hundred people well, marching in Luton does not mean the Prime Minister of Britain should not be making no, a speech about a very should... serious no, no, matter. No, I, I, and this is a problem. The debate by the left is always attempted to be shut down by associating it with far-right extremist no, and racist groups no, instead no, of having no, a frank no, and no, honest no, discussion. I did not say that... ...belittle the idea of a couple of hundred extremists. But if you put yourself in the, in the shoes of a British Muslim in Luton or in other cities where the EDL have marched to live in fear of those groups, then I think they have a right for their Prime Minister not to go abroad to Germany and send them lectures from there on who is not and isn't an extremist. Take a couple of points. I mean, we, we, very, very briefly, we didn't get into this, but one of my other objections to David Cameron's speech is the idea, you want to give a speech on multiculturalism, give a speech on multiculturalism. You want to give a speech on counter-terrorism, give a speech on counter-terrorism. Don't pretend they're one and the same thing. Don't, in, don't offend our intelligence. Terrorism, terrorism is not a... Terrorism is not a cultural problem. Terrorism is a political problem. No, and it's a so religious problem as well. Thing. And it's a religious problem. In your as view, well. Douglas, no, in the view of a lot of problem. people, including the people who carry out acts of terror, who say they do it in the name of religion. They, they, also, they also say they, they, they do it because, because of foreign policy, and you Absolutely. always ignore that. But, bit, don't you, Douglas? No, I don't. When they say they do it because of Iraq, you don't notice that. At least listen to the reason they say they do it. So why didn't he talk about foreign policy in his speech? I'm willing to talk about foreign policy, as would David Cameron be. But you cannot keep on pretending that there is no religious component to. The terrorism because there is. I thought you said it was cultural. No, it was just. Oh, well, pick, 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 I'm saying there is a religious component. Oh, I'm right, saying it's not right. a re cultural component. Mm. The people who blew themselves up on the London Underground uh, were not people who couldn't speak English or didn't go to Absolutely. secular schools. Absolutely, that's the tragedy uh, of it. Well, that's then don't the say it's a cultural problem. No, but you're don't pretend that forced no, marriage. Because maybe you're doing what they were doing. Don't speak at once. You. Nobody can hear. So let's have a little bit of order, shall we? Let's have a thing. Is that the to get back to the question? I mean, the issue of democracy across the region. Some of us have been arguing for many years that Arab states, Muslim states, Muslim majority countries have the same desire for democracy as the rest of the world. You used to hear people say about the Eastern Bloc, the Eastern Europeans can't cope with democracy. Lo and behold, they could. You used to hear it said about South America, the same thing. South Americans somehow can't cope with democracy. Lo and behold, they could. And the same thing is becoming clear across the Arab and Muslim world. The, uh, the Lebanese Druze leader, Walid Jumblat, said that the site in 2005 of Iraqis going to the polls for the first time would have in time a seismic effect in the region because people would not see their neighbors going to vote and not want that themselves. Now this is coming uh, sometime after most of us expected it, but uh, there are obviously problems and it's, it's, it's naive to walk into this and ignore some of the problems within Egypt. But do you, do the, you see, sorry, do you see Mubarak, as Mehdi Hassan said, as our person, the West person in Egypt? No, I or, mean... Or do you think that we should have... I think it's equally patronizing to the people of Egypt to assume they have had no role in their own country. Uh, however, this, the West has had a very complex and I think uh, unfortunate, regrettable uh, situation in recent years of thinking that, the, that stability and the pursuit of stability in the region was the most important thing. That has come back to bite us again and again, not least in the rise in anti-Western feeling across the region. There is a problem though, and it has to be flagged up to go back to the question, which is the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood, if it didn't have Muslim in the name, would be being described at the moment as a fascist political party. It has its roots in fascism. It is an extremist organization. Its offshoot, the Hamas and the Gaza, when it got into power, uh, immediately killed its opposition. And it hasn't had another election. It was just another one announced, July the 9th this year. There was meant to be another ele election in the Palestinian areas. The Hamas have said no. They are a one vote once political party. And we can't be as so naive because to think... Americans we can't. No, 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 no. We cannot be so naive as to think 
that uh, the Brotherhood, if they came to power in Egypt, would be anything other than a disaster for the region. Well, the state do we have the right to intervene to prevent No, no, no. Let me, let me clarify this. So the following. It is very unwise for leaders like William Hague, David Cameron and Barack Obama to be saying who they would like to run Egypt. It's a choice for the Egyptian people and they should remain silent. But that does not mean that behind the scenes and elsewhere you cannot say that the government, whatever it is that comes in in Egypt, has to abide by, among other things, international norms, peace treaties, including the treaty of peace that has kept peace between Egypt and Israel for three decades now. And this is a very, very important thing, because if the Brotherhood comes in and says, as their leaders have said in recent days, that they will immediately block the Suez Canal and start a war with Israel, then we are collectively going to be, and the Middle so, East is going to be, in you, serious trouble. How how can you following way, between you Egypt and Israel? In the following when way, you say you don't want to intervene in by Sadat. In the following way, by saying that, uh, by using soft power, by encouraging the country to go in a certain way, by making it clear that for Egypt to become a normalized country, it has to have a right. normal government. None up there and in, not, the, uh, uh, in the Czech uh, church, the blue Czech church. Well, that was certainly a lively debate between Douglas Murray and um, Mehdi Hassan. And we just wanted to go ahead and let that thing, you know, play through. But I just want to make a few comments when they, you know, in the initial talk about multiculturalism. This was something, okay, that Britain tried, as Douglas Murray basically pointed out, that no matter where you come from, we're going to look at you as individual entities, as individual groups, not as part of the collective. And, you know, labor, the conservative side, I mean, they're all... They all tried this experiment, and it didn't work. And it didn't work. They said, we don't want to force British values on you. Well, listen, you come into my house, you're going to follow my rules. If you don't like my rules, <laughs> you can leave. All right? Now, obviously, I mean, I'm just playing that up, but in, in, in a certain way, there are certain rules of society that must be adhered to. In a Western democracy, it is part of that. The rule of law, habeas corpus, I mean, the Constitution, the Magna, everything that, whatever's, it, whatever is there for the good of the nation. Now, we all talk about everybody wanting to be an individual. I mean, that's what it's about in America. Everyone's an individual. You have individual rights. Well, that is true. But at the same time, there are rights that are made for society. Now, if a group comes in and it's an ethnic group or a religious group or some other group, whatever you want to call it, how do you become part of the society if you don't integrate and assimilate? That was the situation when Douglas pointed out the fact of the 16-year-old girls that are disappearing from high school because they're being sent, forced back to go to Pakistan to, be, to get married against their will, I might add. These are British citizens. You don't hear about that happening in the United States of America. Why the hell is it having, happening in Britain? Because of multiculturalism. The British government doesn't want to get involved. Oh, they're just some brown girls. Nobody's going to care. If they were white, there would be an unbelievable amount of publicity put on to this. Could you imagine if there were a bunch of white girls that were disappearing from high school and going back to Poland or going back to Sweden or Denmark or Finland or another white European nation or a white predominantly white, you know, nation. Could you imagine what would happen? Douglas points this out, and Mehdi Hassan basically, what does he do? He says, oh, you know, that no government stands for it, and there's no society that stands for it. No, there are some people, not the entire amount of the Pakistani society inside there, or the Muslim society over there, not the entire, but there are a good number, there are a huge number that are doing that so much so that guess what? The Foreign Office had to set up a department within the government to go get those girls back. 
I mean, this is so this multiculturalism, you know, you know, did not work. And then everything else in terms of, you know, they're saying Britain meddling in the affairs of Egypt, the Muslim Brotherhood. And that's true. If it didn't, if Muslim Brotherhood didn't have the word Muslim inside it, you know what? All kinds of things there, but as soon as it's Muslim, and you can't say anything about it. You can't do anything about it. Oh, let them flourish, let them do. Well, if that's what the and listen, if people elect if people through their whatever reasons they are, if they elect something, elections have consequences. They all do. But in the background, that doesn't mean that states and nations can try to back channel or whatever. See if they can bring about a change, but you're not going to bring about a change with these types of Islamist terrorist groups that take over these countries, folks. It's just not going to happen. And as Mehdi Hassan said, he says he's a product of multiculturalism. No, he's not. He's integrated into the society. He's assimilated into the society. He's still, obviously, he's a Muslim. But he, I don't think he, would, he shouldn't be considering himself an immigrant he came from an immigrant family. His father came over. It's like my parents came over. We're you know third generation. That's perfectly fine. But I wouldn't say that I'm a product of multiculturalism. I'm as American as the next person inside there or whatever. But do we have a different, you know, do we still ha hold on to some of our cultural things, our religious things? Of course we do. But, you know, there's a meld. It's it's sort of like, the, what do they call the melting pot here in the United States of America? That has really not occurred for the majority of immigrants, illegal, legal, asylees, migrants, whatever you want, you know, entire groups. That has not occurred because when they come, they go and coalesce in those cities, in those towns, in those areas where more and more of people just like who they are, where they came from, have settled. You don't see them settling out in the countryside, you know. No, they go straight into the cities and form what they call these ghetto areas, and that's exactly what's happening. Anyways, folks, we hope you enjoyed the video. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you've been done so already, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel, like, share, and follow us. You all know what to do. Take a look at our video links above and below. And I'll leave you with my final thought, which is, when you're right, you're right, and when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.